And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Hen House Havoc. Now this is a game I saw, and I had not heard anyone talk about this from Ankama, and I, I was curious about it because it looked fun. I saw it set up at, uh, I think it was Gen Con, and I said, this game looks really interesting. Had almost a look like Battleship. Well, guess what? It is very similar to Battleship. Uh, it could be a four-player Battleship, but with special weapons and things like that. And, of course, taking place in a farmyard where they have geared up for war, for whatever reason. I guess, I guess the reason is they all want eggs. Here's how it plays. Each player has several units that they're going to be putting on their own board that they're going to be hiding with a shield here so everyone else can't see it. And you have to put these on your board in the proper orientation and none of them can be next to each other even diagonally. So here's like an example of how I would set everything up. And this board is numbered like with just different numbers in the different types of terrain. So it's pretty easy to see. And each player has a larger version of each of the things on their board. So, for example, you see this here. Here's the larger version, and here's a destroyed larger version. Because you're going to have a board in front of you that's bigger than your small board, and this is the board other players are going to be firing at. On your turn, you're going to have a card in front of you for each of your units. And if that unit is still alive, you can basically tap it and use that unit to fire at the enemies. Uh, so you'll be dropping uh, targeting tokens on the opponent's big boards and then they're going to essentially tell you if you hit or not. If you hit, you'll turn it over to show that you've hit and something else might happen. If you've missed, you just put craters on the board and there's a ton of craters that come with the game just to show that you've missed. So, what do the different characters do or what do the different things happen? So first we have the barn. The barn lets you hit any three spaces of your choice. Also, if the barn's ever destroyed, you get a face-up secret weapon card. We'll come back to that. When your barn is destroyed, each enemy hit that destroyed it, you'll pull the enemy hits off the board, and then you just put the barn on the board sh showing that it's destroyed. So, oh, that's not my barn destroyed. This is my barn destroyed here. I would put that right here because it matches where it is on my little board. And then I would... Uh, there's nine hits on it, so there could be 45 money given out to different players depending on who hit it. The sprayer hits one space, but if it hits someone, it destroys that space and the eight surrounding spaces. So that's pretty cool. The tractor tank hits two spaces that are next to each other, horizontally or vertically, and if it hits a unit, you can also shoot with your howitz egg. Your howitz egg hits a spot, and if it hits it, then you hit the four spots next to it. And you'll notice that these uh, are only one unit small, but they're worth 15 if you nail them. The Armored Combine hits two horizontally and vertically adjacent spaces, and if it hits a unit, you get to put out a magnetic field. A magnetic field is a piece that you can put out on the board somewhere, and basically nobody can target that spot until your next turn. The Tactical Granary here, this lets you target three horizontally and vertically adjacent spaces, and if it hits someone, you steal five sheaves, that's what the money's called, sheaves from the owner. Here you target two different spaces with these dudes, and if you hit a unit, you can target another space. The war chest can't shoot at all, but if someone hits your war chest, they get a secret weapon and 20 sheaves. So those are the different things that you have. Of course, as they get destroyed, you'll have fewer of them to go after. Now, you can get these secret weapons. There's going to be three of these placed up next to the board. Secret weapons can be played for various things, like a sitting duck allows you to, instead of shooting, you drop a sitting duck token on each of your enemy's boards. These are pretty big targeting spots on the boards. Uh, we also have corruption. You can buy an egg from an enemy's hen house for 50 sheaves, but you don't get a secret weapons card. Well, what does that even mean? Well, see, many of your units have an egg on them. Your bigger stuff, usually. When that gets destroyed, you put an egg on this. Your opponents can buy the egg for 25 sheaves. If they do so, they also get a, uh, one of these cards. But with that one, you can buy it for 50 sheaves and you don't get a secret weapon card. Like, why would you ever do that? Well, because you want to get eggs as quickly as you possibly can. Why do you want to get eggs? Because the first person to get five eggs wins the game. 
Not to mention, there's a card where anyone can buy wild eggs, but there's only three of these here, but they are more expensive than regular eggs. There's also all sorts of cards, a cannon launcher, a nuclear strike, where you drop down the nuclear token on somebody's board. Counters, you can steal a secret weapon card from somebody else. You can target six space of your choice on the enemy's boards instead of your thing. You can sell a secret weapons card and get money back for it. During the targeting phase, set a firing unit, target two space of your choice for every five sheaves you pay. So these can be used and do some cool things. And that's pretty much the game. It's kill or be killed. The shields first are basically two pieces, a folding board, and then you drop the roof on it, and it shows your faction. It doesn't really show what your stuff does, but that's all on your cards anyway. The cards are of decent quality, and I really like how everything matches everything else. You're supposed to put these on the cards when you put it out there. So uh, this is my, where is it, my armored combine. It's pretty much the exact same size as the card. You put it there and once it gets destroyed, you just put it on the board showing it destroyed. And I find that to be a neat counterbalance. Everything looks pretty much the same for the different players with some variations and different colors uh, amongst them. I like the big boards and the small boards. It's a little confusing how they numbered them. You just got to remind people that it just goes like this across them and but you just remember it's it's pretty easy you're literally just matching here but as stuff lands in the board and they'll drop a shot on eight you're like okay that's eight here yes i have a unit on that spot that's pretty good there are tons of sheaves and crater pieces i mean a lot of them included in the game a lot of different pieces but i'm pretty happy it's pretty easy to sort out and everything looks really good House Havoc is a lot more fun than it should be, I guess. Because when I told people about this game, I'll be like, oh yeah, it's like Battleship, and right away I can see their brains go, hmm. Because a lot of people don't like Battleship. But this game, which essentially is Battleship, because you're picking on the grid where your opponent is, you have these special abilities, and it's fun. You're trying to figure out which one to do. Like, I like the one where I shoot, and if I hit, I hit everything next to it, because there's a good chance I'll blow something up. But that first shot needs to hit. While your regular barn, just three shots on the boards, that could be useful to figure out where things are. Then a horizontal line, pff, it, it, it feels like they're equalized. Not to mention, eventually they might kill the one weapon that you used all the time, so then you have to switch to other things. Now, the only negative thing about this game that I would say is I love the secret weapon cards, but I don't like that there's one that just basically cancels someone else's, and there's one that lets you steal one from someone else, and the, some of them seem more powerful than others. Uh, they had some really fun effects. I just wish there wasn't ones that canceled them because then what's the whole point of getting it? Like I spent all this work getting one and then you just canceled it right away. Uh, but they are fun. I like dropping the nuke bomb and things like that. The Buying the eggs is kind of a weird thing because you need to get this economy going so that you can buy eggs and there's the neutral ones. So you can buy eggs from somebody else that you've shot at. It works pretty well. And your goal is to get all these eggs, and so you're getting money and trying to find that treasure chest, which is, again, kind of random luck. But I think for the most part, I enjoyed this game more when I just stopped worrying about all those little details. I just sat around and picked some weapons and shot. Oh, no, you blew this up, and the game doesn't take that long on here. It says 45 minutes in the box. That's pretty correct, and I'd say a good 10 minutes of those is like setting up your board and trying to pick where your stuff goes. And, you know, you do that old battleship. They probably won't shoot in the corner, but they know that I think that, so maybe I won't put something in the corner. Things like that. And you can use some logic since you know pieces can't touch each other. When you, an enemy thing is blown up, you now know all the spots next to that do not have something in them. So there's a little bit of that too. And it has a really good visual effect. Then the silly farm theme helps, you know, because the war... The war is a little diluted. I don't really care about pigs and chickens, you know, shooting missiles at each other. It's fun. So it's like it's like a battleship upgrade for multiplayers that works. I like it. Henhouse Havoc. Dice Tower Judgment approved.